this video we're talking about negative exponents and how to simplify expressions that involve negative exponents. So the general rule we're going to follow, if we have x to the negative n, remember we have this concept of the understood 1. So this x is actually x over 1, right? We can make x the numerator, 1 the denominator, and we haven't changed the value. So there's this understood 1 as the denominator. So really we have x to the negative n in our numerator. When we have a negative exponent and we want to make it a positive exponent, all we do is, if the value is in the numerator, we move it to the denominator and the exponent becomes positive. So this is going to be equal to 1 over x to the positive n. And the n became positive because we took this x to the negative n value and we moved it to the denominator. Just because we take this out of the numerator doesn't mean that the numerator now becomes 0. The numerator becomes 1. That's really important to remember. If instead we had started with 1 over x to the negative n right here, our x to the negative n is in the denominator as opposed to starting with it in the numerator, we can do the same thing. We can just move it to the numerator from the denominator and this becomes x to the positive n. So when we move it from the denominator to the numerator, the sign flips. So basically, if you move the term from the numerator to the denominator, or vice versa, from the denominator to the numerator, you can change the sign on the exponent. So if we want to apply that idea to these other examples, here we have 3 to the negative 2. Remember that this is the same as 3 over 1. So this is then going to become 1 over 3 to the positive 2. We just moved it to the denominator and changed the sign from negative to positive on the exponent. And we know that 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So we get 1 over 9. So 3 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 ninth. If we look at this example here, we have to be careful when we're dealing with negative bases. Notice we have two examples, one where our negative sign is not inside parentheses with the 4, and one where it is. When it's not inside our parentheses, our order of operations tells us that we have to do the exponent first. So really, we're doing this part first. The negative doesn't stay attached to this 4. We do 4 to the negative 2, so this is going to be equal to negative when we keep this negative sign out in front. 4 to the negative 2 becomes 1 over 4 to the positive 2. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. So we get negative 1 over 16. So that negative sign remains. Here, though, because the negative sign is inside the parentheses, it tells us that we have to keep this negative with the 4. So what this simplifies to is 1 over negative 4 to the positive 2. So we changed the sign on the exponent from a negative to a positive when we moved this whole thing to the denominator. The parentheses tell us to bring the negative along with the 4 into the denominator. Now with the negative sign inside the parentheses and we're squaring negative 4, what we have here is essentially 1 over negative 4 times negative 4, which we know is going to be 1 over 16 because we have two negative signs multiplied together. They cancel with each other and become a positive, and we have 4 times 4, which is 16. So without the parentheses, we get a negative 1 16th. With the parentheses, we get a positive 1 16th. So just remember to be careful when you're dealing with a negative base. But other than that, those are going to be the rules we use to deal with negative exponents.